Tech family, g'day. With me is Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Carbon 7th generation with an Intel 10th gen processor. Finally, a laptop that I highly recommend, but just not this configuration. I value your time, so won't make you watch the video before telling you the issue. The gotcha is the 4K model has major PWM screen flickering at all brightness levels. So just make sure you choose the 1080 model, which also happens to have more acceptable battery life. Now for the rest of the review, I'm going to proceed with the lid shut because I don't want you to be distracted by PWM flickering. I actually have the camera shutter speeds set quite low, so you probably weren't noticing it, but just in case, we'll proceed like this. I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk about tech from the perspective of what it's actually like to own and use these machines. If after this video you like what you've watched, make sure to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up and the notification bell as I definitely appreciate it. I bought this laptop to replace my everyday carry, the two-year-old Dell 13-inch XPS 9370, which I use for lightweight office tasks, reviewing photos and videos I've taken while out and about, and as a backup machine in case I need to do some coding on the go. My aim for purchasing this laptop was to gain more screen real estate than my old XPS, a lighter weight laptop, a better keyboard, and an increase in RAM, as my XPS only has eight gigabytes. I chose the 4K display, as I like looking at super crisp fonts. It's a very bright, very color accurate display with 100% sRGB and 86% Adobe RGB. The display came with no dead pixels, no noticeable backlight bleeding, and handles reflections reasonably well. Unfortunately, it isn't a touchscreen, which I liked about my XPS. The keyboard is out of this world. It's hard to explain how comfortable it is until you've actually used it. People rave about ThinkPad keyboards and it is warranted. I love the dedicated buttons for print screen, home, and etc. I found myself constantly reaching for this laptop over others I own for its keyboard alone. It's kind of like the difference between good and great. You don't know what great is until you've had it. The keyboard is backlit, but does have one minor negative. It's an odd layout with the left function key located where the control key normally is. If you are used to non ThinkPad devices or are using this in conjunction with other Windows PCs, this can get annoying. You can easily switch these keys in Lenovo software, but due to the physical key size difference, it doesn't fully solve the problem. I believe the reason Lenovo has stuck to this layout is because repeat customers are used to it. Well, here's a suggestion. Offer an alternate keyboard layout that you can configure the laptop with at time of purchase. They already offer different keyboards for different regions. Why not solve this? The trackpad is a little small for my liking and the texture of it isn't the smoothest, but it's still good enough. I personally don't use the red nipple, but it's there if you want it. The sound quality and volume are good enough, although the speakers come from the bottom, so they won't sound as good if you're using the laptop on your lap. Audio latency is quite decent. The build quality of the chassis is superb. It looks premium, it's very lightweight, 2.4 pounds, it has no sharp edges, and it can be opened with one hand, although with a little effort. CPU performance on this laptop is quite good. I opted for the i5 model as almost all these thin and light laptops don't come close to maintaining their CPU's full turbo boost for more than a couple of seconds, which is due to thermal constraints. Therefore, for many use cases, it's somewhat irrelevant whether you get an i5 or an i7, assuming they have the same number of CPU cores. Anyway, here are my performance scores for this laptop compared to the newer Dell XPS 9300, the old Dell XPS 9370, and the Surface Book 315. You'll see that this laptop does quite well, but it is a fair bit behind the new Ice Lake equipped XPS 9300, although that laptop's fans are quite a bit louder and more distracting than the ThinkPads. CPU temperatures do get very hot when under load. I hit 97 Celsius, but with a very small undervolt of negative 50 millivolts to the CPU core and cache, I saw a large drop in temperature stabilizing at around 80 Celsius, which is acceptable. Here is the laptop's AS SSD scores using the included Toshiba SSD. These scores are decent enough, but certainly not great for an NVMe SSD in 2020. Fan noise is excellent in the sense that there rarely is any. Fans don't pulsate, they aren't high pitched, and they turn off quickly when the laptop is no longer under load. It gets a little warm when under load in the top right corner. Overall though, other manufacturers like Gigabyte and Dell with their new XPS 9300 could learn from this laptop's fan control. The ports are almost all there, which is great, but there is an annoyance. The charging port is only available on the left side of the laptop. This frequently means that I have to run power cables across the back of the laptop if the power socket is located on the right side. I prefer the XPS here as it has charging ports on each side of the laptop. There's also no SD card reader, which sucks and surprises me given the amount of ports on this laptop. 
The battery life is not great on the 4K model at about five hours using Microsoft Word with brightness a tad turned down. For better battery life, opt for the 1080 screen. As the laptop supports USB-C charging, this isn't a major drawback for me personally because I can buy cheap chargers to leave at different locations I travel to. One good thing is that the laptop doesn't throttle the CPU when on battery power like some Windows laptops do. You can still opt to run it in best performance mode and get the full power. The webcam works, has a privacy blocker and is in the right place, but it's nothing to write home about. The laptop is somewhat upgradable as you can replace the SSD. I found the laptop to be very stable. I had no blue screens or lockups. Also, I liked the peace of mind of being able to add an extended next business day on-site warranty to the machine. Lastly, the price is great for this laptop. I purchased mine for about $1,500 with the 4K screen, 16 gig of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a two year next business day on-site warranty. All right, so that's a lot of positives with only minor negatives. So why am I returning this laptop? Well, as mentioned, this laptop has the worst PWM of any laptop I've ever used. PWM is where the screen flickers to reduce brightness. It may cause your eyes to strain. What makes this laptop worse is that the PWM flickering occurs at all brightness levels, even max, which is rare. It gets substantially worse the moment you lower the brightness, which sucks as the max brightness on this laptop is super bright and you'd rarely want to use it at this level. That being said, I do highly recommend this laptop. Just get the model with a 1080 screen without PWM and enjoy a little bit of extra battery life. Anyway, folks, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this review, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. If you have any questions, join the Discord chat, Twitter, or leave them in the comments below. Till next time, I'll catch you later.